Well, hello, hello, and welcome back. I'm A.J. O'Neill, and I'm going to be your instructor for tonight's Beyond Code Live. And in this session, we're going to be talking about the vending machine problem. So this is a very common problem that you're going to come across in interviews and kind of miniature tests of skill. And it's something that you should know how to solve. This is really uh, foundational base level stuff. <clears throat> so I'm just kind of going to go over the problem with you. Not, we're, gonna, we're not going to go over the solution here, but what I want you to consider is not can you write this in code, but can you write this in plain English? So are you able to articulate a solution to the problem with the vocabulary that you already have? And my guess is that this might be a struggle for you. So I'm going to give you a couple of words that, that you can use to help you through this as well. Okay, so hopefully you're familiar with the concept of a, of a vending machine. You put cash money in and a little arm twists or turns, uh, candy falls down to the bottom, you reach in, you grab it. I like this problem because it's a real world problem. A lot of the puzzle problems that are intended to be kind of tricksy and ambiguous, I myself am not very good at. When it's a real world problem that I actually understand, it's easier for me to reason about and give a correct solution. Anyway, so with a vending machine, ideally, if you put in $5 and an item costs less than $5, what you'll get back out of the coin slot will be the minimum number of bills and coins that you could get. So if you put in a five and something costs 70 cents, ideally you would get back four ones and then you would get back three dimes and that would mean that you paid 70 cents. There's no other combination. Oh, whoops. Nope. Not three dimes. Uh, one quarter and one nickel. So there's no other combination that can give you fewer uh, items to take out of the cash return than that. That's the minimum number is you have to get at least four bills unless it tenders $2 bills, which it doesn't. And you, you, uh, if you got dimes, it would be three dimes. But if you can get quarters and a nickel, then you'd only get one quarter and one nickel. So that's the fewest number of things that you can get. And the problem that you have is you can do this intuitively. If someone gave you a $5 bill and asks you to give them change, you would know what to do. The question is, can you describe what you know how to do in clear, descriptive language? In the tools that I would like you to have as vocabulary for solving this problem would be words like when and while or as long as, if, uh, less than, greater than, less than, or equal to, greater than or equal to, equal to, not equal to, and then try to describe uh, the, the process. Uh, until might be another good word. I actually need to make a list of these words and, and put them in here. But the goal is, can you describe this in English? If you can describe it in English, it is not difficult to translate from English to code. It is difficult to translate from something that you don't know how to articulate already. Because if I were to speak to a person, I would just say, hey, can you break a five? For, you know, can you, can you break a five into five one or four ones and, and uh, three quarters and whatever. <clears throat> but the person does a process in their brain. Can you articulate what that process is? Okay, maybe we'll go into the solution a little bit. So let's just think about this in English. When cash and the cost are given. So we need two pieces of information in order to work this. 
where you know how much cash is given and how much the items cost in total. So those are two pieces of information we need. So when we have the total of the items and the total of the cash has been inserted, while there is still change to give, which that we need to define in some way, what does it mean while there is still change to give? Let's see. Ah, now see, I'm stumped on this one. Let me just try to think through it in English here for a second. So we have, we have some third amount. We have how much change is, we need to determine how much change is due and how much change has been given. So if we want to get the amount of change that's due, we could say the amount of change that's due is equal to the, um, the amount of the total amount subtracted from, or I guess we could say that the cash given minus the cost of the items. So that's, that's change due. And then change given would actually need to be uh, not just a number that we calculate, but we need to have, you know, in a register, you have slots for your fives and your ones and your quarters and your dimes and your nickels, etc., your pennies. So we also need some sort of container so that we can put money in the container. And this is going to be what we return is this container. And then we need to decrement the amount that's due. Or we need to check... We, like I originally said, we could have the amount that's been given and we could check to see if those two things are equal. So just kind of working through the problem in words here. Okay, so when I get, the first thing I'm going to do is calculate the amount due. So I'm going to say amount due is equal to the cash given minus the cost of items. Okay, so I've got amount due. Then what I need to do is look at each denomination starting with the largest. The denominations need to be in order. So starting with five dollars, if th the amount due, or rather what this would really be is as long as the amount due is greater than or equal to five dollars, put five dollars into the $5 register, decrease the amount due by $5. So that's one process there. So this register, in programming it would be an array, uh, or it could be an object, but we, we basically, we know there's a bin where we're gonna collect $5. And, our, and our, actually our goal with our program is to return the number it's not necessarily to return the dollars themselves, but how many five dollars? One five dollars, zero five dollars, two five dollars, three five dollars, how many ones? Okay, so let's say it's not actually, it's not technically, it's not actually a register. It's a, it's a counter. So we have a set of counters. <clears throat> so while, or as long as the amount due is greater than or equal to five dollars, take, uh, increment the $5 counter and subtract $5 from the amount due. Now we need to take that process and we need to apply it broadly to each item. So now we need to take the same thing that we just said. We need to say it again for $1 because this, this segment, as long as this is a loop. So as long as the amount is greater, the amount two is greater than or equal to five dollars, do these steps. That's a loop. So now we need another loop for the one dollar. 
So as long as the amount due is greater than or equal to $1, increment the $1 counter by 1 and subtract $1 from the amount due. So that's a loop. That'll continue to run. And then we need to do the same thing for 25 cents. And then we need to do the same thing for 10 cents, 5 cents, and 1 cent. And if we do all of that, then we'll end up with a counter which will have the number of fives, the number of ones, the number of quarters, the number of dimes, the number of nickels, the number of pennies. Now, this would be considered an unrolled loop. Don't get too caught up in fancy terms, but you'll occasionally hear this. We could have we could go about this another way. It's fine to have this basically it's the same loop with only one change repeated the however many different times it was five, one quarter, close six times. We could also say for each of the following denominations ordered from greatest to least, five dollars, one dollar. 25 cents, 10 cents, five, as long as the amount due is greater than the current denomination, denominations counter by one, subtract that denomination amount from the amount due. And we could actually go one step further on this. The better solution to this problem would be to use a modulus, which I won't go into that. That really is easier to look at in code. It just means the remainder. So if you say, how many times does two go into five? Well, two goes into five two times, and then it has a remainder of one. That's the modulus result is one. It's what the remainder is. So instead of doing a loop, we could use this, but that's better shown in code. Anyway, could you write down what I was just talking about or put it in your own words in a way that it makes sense in English? If you can do it in English, then like I said, it's easier, well not easier, it's easy to translate it into code. But if you can't get it in English, then your ability to translate it into code is going to be minimal to none because it's not, oh, I learn a programming language and I'm good at programming. No, you learn to program and then you program in a programming language and you can pick any programming language to program in, but you have to know how to program before you can learn a programming language. Generally, you learn them in tandem, but the idea here is that you want to learn the mental thinking capacity of solving the problem and focus on that. So often people say, I don't know how to solve this. I don't know how to, how do I, how do I do this? You'll see the, these people type these questions into Stack Overflow and Google and whatever. How do I solve this problem in Python? Well, it's not about solving the problem in Python. It's not about solving the problem in Go. It's not about solving the problem in Rust. It's not about solving the problem as a program, and then translating that into whatever. So, I will go over this again with actually writing out code for a solution. It's very, very simple uh, in terms of the complexity of programs as they go. But it's, uh, it's a very, this is a very good problem to know. And there's variations on it. You can look at it from different ways. Uh, you could look at it from the perspective of you know, you could say, add more conditions to it. If you know how many bills the vending machine has active and you try to produce the ideal amount, check a different register to see, are there still so many of X bills or X coin left in the machine? If so, fill this out. If not, then try the next optimal amount so that you always get the optimal amount. There are... Uh, yeah, there's, there's a couple of different variations on this problem, 
But my challenge to you tonight is to to go through it yourself a couple of times, write it down on a sheet of paper, throw it away, write it down again, just kind of burn it into your memory and use those words that, you know, that, that vocabulary that we're building up. The when, until, as long as, if, less than, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, equal to, not equal to, uh, minus, plus, um, that, that, I think it's time for me to say good night. If you liked this, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you've got comments or questions, leave me some comments or questions down in the doobly-doo. Uh, feel free to subscribe and I will catch you next time. Adios.